phone off. Oh, okay. Nope. Good evening and welcome to tonight's candidate forum for Contra Costa County Supervisor District 3. My name is Liz Fuller, Library Services Manager for the Contra Costa County Library. At this time, I'd like to ask you to all silence your phones. Tonight's event is a partnership with several organizations, the League of Women Voters, the County Elections Department, and CCTV. We're streaming live on Facebook and video coverage will be available online after the program on the Library and County Elections Department websites as well as the League, League's Voters Edge website. Please join me in welcoming our moderator tonight, Ann Flynn from the League of Women Voters. Ann is the past president of the League of Women Voters of Diablo Valley. She's a former elected member of the Walnut Creek School Board and retired from the US Department of State as a Foreign Service Officer. Welcome, Ann. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us this evening. The League of Women Voters of Diablo Valley is a co-sponsor of this forum, and Liz just told you all of our other co-sponsors. And this forum this evening is to present candidates running for District 3, Contra Costa County Board of Supervisors. There are two candidates for one position. District 3 serves the communities of Bethel Island, Blackhawk, Brentwood, Byron, Diablo, Discovery Bay, Knightson, Oakley, and most of the city of Antioch. Did I get that right? The League is a nonpartisan organization that does not support or oppose any candidate. We are here this evening as part of our key mission to educate and inform voters. The forum is being taped by CCTV and uh, is being broadcast on public access television as well as on the internet. Just now, both candidates pulled uh, a number to determine a speaking order. Uh, the opening speaking order, Ms. Burgess will speak first in her opening statement, and then, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Seeger will speak first for the closing statement. Uh, each candidate will have the opportunity to have two rebuttals during the program of one minute each. Just, you just have to ask me. To our audience here, remember, if you have a question you would like to ask all the candidates, or both candidates, write it on a three by five card, and there are people with cards uh, walking around. Um, and then the, uh, one of our volunteers will get it up to me. Questions will be screened to avoid duplicates. And we will try and ask questions uh, of a same topic at the same time. Each candidate will have one minute to answer the question. Personal attacks are not permitted. Statements made about other candidates must be from the public record or will not be allowed. Each speaker will be timed, and we will give everyone a 15-second warning sign. Our league volunteers in the front row, if you'd hold up your yellow card, please. That's what the candidate will see when they have 15 seconds. And then the red card goes up when they have completed their uh, time. For the audience here at this forum, it's being taped, and it's particularly important for you to turn off your cell phones now, if you haven't yet done so. And please, no personal recordings or videos. And I want you to remind you not to cheer or applaud any statement. And we won't even mention anything else. Now we'll proceed with a one and a half minute opening statement beginning with Ms. Burgess. Good evening, my name is Diane Burgess and I have been your Board of Supervisor now. I'm going into my fourth year on my first term. It is a, it, it's something that I treasure and it is such a, um, a privilege to serve you. You know, the Board of Supervisors is a complicated job, and it would be hard to uh, put it all into even the hour and a half that we have to talk about it. It touches hospitals to airports, the Delta to the homeless, and there's everything in between. And so this is a job that takes a lot of uh, attention, curiosity, and a willingness to work together. I have some priorities, and that is public safety, making sure that people are safe and that, that they have the services that they need. Uh, economic development, because we should be able to work where we live and live where we work. And uh, making sure that our delta is protected and our open spaces all while protecting our tax dollars. As a mom and a grandma raising kids here in Contra Costa County, I look forward to the future and making sure we preserve the beautiful lifestyle that we have here in Contra Costa County. 
and I, I hope that I will be able to answer your questions, and I look forward to hearing what you have to share. Thank you. Mr. Seeger. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for putting this on tonight. I uh, really appreciate the chance to be able to speak to the public about uh, our, our thoughts and goals and ideas for how to move forward for a better Contra Costa. Um, I currently am on the water district, the uh, Diablo Water District in the city of Oakley. Um, I'm also the chair of the Delta Sierra Club uh, local group, and I serve on the executive committee for the San Francisco chapter Sierra Club. Um, and I also uh, move around on and attend different uh, groups in the area that are working on issues. And right now, since I'm working for the water district, or not working, but I'm serving on the water district, I spend a lot of my time going to meetings uh, regarding uh, groundwater um, <clears throat> sustainability. Um, also, uh, Frank's Track Futures, to, it's gonna be one of the largest uh, projects um, in the history of California as far as um, uh, restoring a thousand acres of, um, of uh, an old island that had sunk. And um, wow, that moved fast. <laughs> um, so anyway, I look forward to having the rest of the conversation with you tonight. Thank you very much. Um, for the next 30 or 50 minutes or so, um, I will ask questions that you have submitted from the audience. I'll do my best to ensure that each candidate answers each question, and fairly, everyone gets the same amount of time. So our first question goes to Ms. Burgess. And I think um, uh, just an over, overall question is good to start with. What are the biggest issues you see in District 3, and what <coughs> can the county do about them? Well, as I stated in my uh, opening remarks, you know, I've, uh, my priorities have been to make sure that public safety is covered, and that's both uh, law enforcement and fire. Uh, we've made sure that our, our sheriffs and our fire district are getting the, the support that they need. Uh, it's about economic development and bringing uh, jobs to East Contra Costa County, and how I've dug into that is to create agricultural policies that help our farmers be able to be more successful. It's about working to revitalize the industrial areas of the northern waterfront. It's about also looking forward to emerging technologies, and I look forward to sharing some of the exciting things that we've been doing with that. And the rest of my priorities I'll have to go over in my next answer because I'm about done now. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Seeger. Um, I'm just going to start with my main priority that the, 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 well, two reasons, two top reasons I'm running. The first one is to give uh, the voters of East Contra Costa uh, a, a chance to have a, a choice between candidates with different styles and different um, ambitions. I agree with everything that, um, uh, that Ms. Burgess just said. Uh, said, I mean, we definitely want to increase our services, make sure that that's all taken care of. Um, but the biggest thing that I'm interested in right now, and I don't know why nobody's, why anybody's, why we're not talking about it, is the general plan update and also the climate action plan update. Um, <clears throat> right now, we're facing a crisis in, um, in, and it's, and it's man-made crisis of, of um, <laughs> Those cards come up very quickly. Um, I will get better as I move forward, but uh, those are those are my two top issues, and I would like to talk more about how to move forward with those. Thank you. Now, um, a question, an over another overarching question that's not specific, um, Mr. Seeger. First, how can we facilitate stronger, more inclusive collaboration within our community? Um. Okay, so the so what we need to do is we need to we need to do do things that excite the public, the things that big things that make people get excited about what you're doing. When we're talking about quality of life, and that's what we're really talking about for a county supervisor is providing a better quality of life for all in a safer quality of life. And what we need to do is 
create projects that involve people and and uh, and and appreciates what people have to say <laughs> regarding um, each issue as it comes up, um, such as the transportation uh, issue that's, okay, maybe I'm not getting better at this 60 second thing. We have way more time with the last one. Okay, so. thank, thank you, Ms. Burgess. A key part of this job is being able to create collaboration, and it's about reaching out to people that don't necessarily agree with you sometimes, because I represent everybody, and it's about hearing everybody's point of view, their concerns, their worries, but it's also allowing everybody to bring their talents and their gifts and their, you know, their, their, their way of helping make it happen. You know, uh, I've worked on bringing our nonprofits together because what they found was there was about $8 being spent in West County versus $1 in East County with our nonprofits. I've been helping with capacity building and just a big push on census um, coming up on April 1st. I've brought all of our nonprofits together. I've sat our different staff, different members of agencies together to talk about important topics and come up with solutions, and time is up. Thank you very much. You're doing much better at that than I am. <laughs> I don't know how I do that. <laughs> I have a very good internal clock, right, too. One, yes. One minute. Okay, Ms. Burgess. Yes. Uh, does our community have a disaster response plan? And if so, does it include economic, um, uh, an economic recovery component? That's a great question. You know, uh, we just had the power shutoffs with uh, teaming of a, a, a bunch of fires this past November. And that was one of the questions is how are we going to deal with this um, on the financial level. So talking about a plan, we've got CERT training, we've got um, different agencies that work and do all of this, and if you were there, which I was at three of the different fires on that day, it was like a ballet. Everybody worked together, we had the resources, but going back to the financial part of it, See, it's not just how much it costs the county, it's how much it costs the individual who loses the food in the refrigerator, or the business that cannot open, or the city that has to you know, open the shelter. And do we have a way of recovering it? We're still working with the state to make sure that that's, uh, financing is all encompassing, but that hasn't been solved, and that's for our state legislators to help us with. Thank you, Mr. Seeger. Um. So I'm gonna, so I need to, I need to establish who I am here. Um, so a lot of this is learning on the fly and being able to, to adjust to um, new situations. When you are attending meetings and these, uh, these issues come before you, um, you go over these documents with your staff, you go over these uh, issues with the administration. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm aware of the, um, the plans that we have, the hazard mitigation plans that we have for the water district because I am um, involved in reading those and voting on those. And so these things can, can obviously be learned and, and to take a position on them is, is to me a little ludicrous because of course we are going to have a, a hazard mitigation plan and of course we are uh, we're in concert with with all of the state and federal agencies that help and and assure and make it that we must have plans in place okay thank you very much i see that the one minute time is uh, a little stressful and um the answers aren't as developed as we might want, so I'm making a decision here to move to one and a half minute answers if the timers can uh, readjust their thinking and the uh, um, uh, candidates can uh, have an, an extra 30 seconds for each, uh, each answer. I'll adjust my internal clock. Yes, well. internal <laughs> clock, absolutely. <laughs> Just add another half. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Seeger, um, what is the uh, role of a district supervisor in creating jobs in Contra Costa County? And uh, how will you make this happen? How will you create jobs? 
Well, you've you've got the jobs that you that you determine as far as infrastructure um, and and what you work for. And I'm I'm guessing, and this is what we need more uh, most of is is um, is a supervisor in East Contra Costa that is um, that is. Um, that is fighting to to get the dollars allocated to the projects that are important for East Contra Costa, um, and as far as creating the jobs, <clears throat> um, it it's a matter of of basically um, looking at your resources and understanding what what is possible and we have a huge amount of open space here and that is basically what we govern as supervisors and um, in a, my determination is that we definitely need to do more uh, sustainable farming and um, replace the food that we're purchasing from out of state and out of town and put that in our grocery stores. Thank you very much. Ms. Burgess? You know, during the economic turndown, we saw the uh, largest impact on these communities here in East County because our, our um, local cities are dependent on uh, property taxes. There isn't as much in a sales tax. And the jobs to housing ratio here in Brentwood is, I think it's one to 70, I think is what, what we've seen. So the reason why we need more jobs is to help create a more sustainable community in our cities and in our county. And what I've done is, is serve on the Northern Waterfront Initiative. I've, I've worked on uh, the airport commission, but I've also worked on, like I said, the, the nonprofit. One of the largest um, employers is nonprofits, but it's also about our agricultural community, and it's about being willing to not only just sit on a committee, I sit on 30 different committees, by the way, but it's about making sure that we're very focused. And so we have the Byron Airport, and we are looking at investing in making sure that we can do something creative. So that's what I was talking about in emerging technologies drones, electric airplanes. We're bringing people out here and we have actually created jobs at the airports and we're helping with agriculture. We've got the Oakley um, Logistics Center that's gonna create 2,000 jobs. We have infrastructure with transportation that helps bring people here for a counter commute. So I'd like to respond. Um, I'm going to ask another question on jobs. So if okay. this is okay with you, just to roll it into the next one, there's a lot of interest in the audience about economic development and jobs. So could you talk a little more specifically about what jobs you want to bring to East County? What, um, yes, again, continue your thought, but more specifically about what, what you, kinds of jobs. Do you want me to start? Yes, please. Okay, all right. You know, um, if you look at areas that have found their niche, it's not something that we all go, okay, let's be the specialist in this. It comes from entrepreneurs. It comes from something unique that comes about. And so it's about uh, nurturing that and creating those opportunities. So it's incubators, it's job, um, it's, it's helping workforce development. You know, I'd like to put these emerging technologies into our schools so they're thinking about this technology not as like a new technology, but they're already ready to use it and figure out how we can use it. It's about this, This we had this industry here along the watershed, or along the uh, waterfront. Why can't we recapture that? But it, it can't be old, it has to be new. And we can incorporate environmentally friendly ways where we can interact with our beautiful waterfront and we can create jobs. So it's, it's about being creative and it's about collaborating. And I'm really proud to have worked with uh, the cities out here all the way out to um, Hercules and about we all are working together. So when Oakley got this logistics center that's gonna create 2,000 jobs, they were all excited because everybody wins when we all work together and that's, that's how we create jobs. 
I can't tell you what they are, but it's about creating that process where we're all working together. And I'm done with my time. Yay. Boom. <laughs> Mr. Seeger. <laughs> um, OK, well, I'm glad that the, that the Logistics Center came up. Um, this is, OK, and then also my opponent did mention uh, sustainable and sustainability. Um, that's my biggest concern. My biggest concern is that we're not moving in a, in a sustainable fashion. And sustainability is a job creator. Um, and what we need to do is we need to re-envision what East Contra Costa lifestyle is. And if that is spending all of your time on the freeway, then we just continue creating jobs by building more housing. Or we let the developers decide where the houses are, which is basically suburban sprawl. Um, that's a way of creating jobs, but that's not a smart way of creating jobs. The smartest way of creating jobs, and I'm sure we'll get a question about this later, is like uh, uh, Measure J, the transportation measure. Um, that's a nifty beginning, but it doesn't go far enough. <clears throat> we need to reduce our carbon emissions drastically in order to obtain the, the goals that have been set by us by all of the local documents that have been put out for local sustainability. Contra Costa is one of the worst um, uh, regions as far as meeting its sustainability goals. When I went in to talk to the, to the city council at Oakley, and I said, you guys, you're going to have 2.5 million square feet of rooftop. You need to put solar panels on there. That's jobs. OK. In continuing in this theme, uh, Mr. Seeger, um, what effort is being encouraged to inform the county communities to do all that's possible to reduce our carbon footprint? Let's say that again. <laughs> what is being done and what can be done for all of our communities from the county point of view, how can you encourage communities to reduce our carbon footprint? Um, well, there's, there's, there's a group, uh, Sustainable Contra Costa, and they're, they've got a nice little app that teaches you how to you know, reduce and, you know, uh, your, your carbon footprint at home. And that's good. Um, but when we're talking about a larger carbon footprint, what we need to do is we need to get people out of their cars. What we need to do is we need to create a, tra we need to reimagine what the infra what the transportation infrastructure looks like. And yeah, it may be a little I inconvenient, but we need to have transportation feeder systems that can be either light rail or it could be bus systems where people are brought to the central locations where they can catch mass transit and get out of town. We need to, cr we need to create areas at these transportation um, hubs where we're building the majority of housing. We need to, to re-envision a, a society where people can live and work and play all in the same area. And if they need to, um, if they need to leave town, they don't have a car that they're going to be pulling out of their garage. They're going to be jumping into uh, clean, safe, enjoyable tr public transportation and then taking that public transportation to where it is that they need to get. Um, and it's, it's going to be difficult, but it's definitely outreaching to the youth because Thank you. they're we're, the next We're going to have more on this uh, also. Ms. Burgess? Yeah, so actually the, the answer is we all need to be a part of that. In, in reducing our carbon footprint. The county has um, done quite a bit. On Tuesday, we have a policy <coughs> that's going to expand electric charging uh, stations in the county. Uh, we're building a new administrative building that is a net zero. We're putting in solar everywhere. We also, uh, yeah, the Sustainable Contra Costa is a nonprofit that um, I've worked with. But we also have the Sustainability Commission. And there are people that are working on looking at every way the county operates and how we can do better. And it is one of our core values. And as a person that worked for 10 years with a nonprofit working on environmental issues, I can tell you the way to do it is to involve people on their level. And if it's related to gardening or whether it's related to habitat 
or whether it's related to transportation, it's talking their language. And Measure J works on putting people in public transit and getting people out of cars. It's about the reverse commute. We have an infrastructure and transportation that transports everybody one direction, one part of the day, and another away. Wouldn't it be financially responsible and environmentally thoughtful to have people using that infrastructure both directions? Boom, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Burgess, well, I, I wanted to ask, do you um, support Measure J, and uh, do you encourage voters in the county to, uh, to support it? I'm supporting Measure J because it does invest in jobs. It invests in the airport so that we can create more jobs. It also in, it supports um, safety on our roads. It does invest heavily in East County. And one of the things that we need to remember is that in East County, we have traditionally not supported certain measures. And if we don't support them and they get passed anyway, we're not going to be considered. So I am really proud of what we've included in Measure J, and the voters will decide, but I am personally supporting it because I believe it helps with safer roads, it helps create jobs, it gets people off the roads and into public transit, and it invests in trails and, and helps our seniors with transit. So I am supporting Measure J. Thank you. Mr. Seeger? Um. Like I said before, Measure J is close, but it's, it's, it, it needs some work. This is a 35-year commitment to, uh, to a transportation tax <clears throat> that doesn't do enough. Um, whether you believe it or not, um, there is going to be a, a mass infusion of money into economies and, and areas in order to change the way that we, like again, perceive transportation, how we get from place to place. Um, it's called the Green New Deal, and um, every single, um, every single uh, um, congressman in Contra Costa is supporting that. And what we need, oh, except for um, Jerry McNerney, he does not support it, but he should come on board because what this project does is, is we need to have shovel-ready projects ready to go. And when we're talking about clean, green transportation, we need people that are gonna fight to make sure that when we pay 30, 40 years for a full electric BART, that we aren't getting a diesel train. And then now they want to extend that diesel train. And we need to move past that. We can see right through that. It's, it's old technology and, um, and, and people want to do the right thing, and we're not giving them the opportunity to do so. And that's why Measure J needs to be, go back to the drawing board, I'll vote for it next year. Okay, uh, again, there, there are more questions on this topic, so I, I hope it's uh, uh, acceptable to uh, pursue it a little bit more. <laughs> um, Measure J will improve roads and transit, but we really need more jobs where people are for less commuting. Um, so how can we get jobs closer to people? If you'd like to spend another uh, little while talking about that, Mr. Seeger, do you have more points to make? Um, okay, so once again, there needs to be a grand conversation on, on basically um, limiting and, and lowering our carbon footprint as Contra Costa as a, as a whole. Um, this has everything to do with a general plan update. I really hope that people start paying attention to that and when it comes time to write comments on that. Um, as far as getting jobs into the area, what, what we need to do is we need to incentivize in some manner um, our cities and local areas to, to decide where their transportation hub is going to be, and then we need to develop a plan that serves that plan, um, that, that their plans. And, and we need to kick BART out as far as we can, as quickly as we can. We need to get it out to, to, to Stockton or Tracy. Um, we need to, we, it needs to, doesn't need to be one single rail. There can be a station somewhere. And the thing is, is if we've got trains that are cutting through and getting people from 
are over large distances and we don't need to build roads, that lowers the, um, the developmental pressure on different areas and allows for us to concentrate on our agricultural um, assets, which we have here. And we there's so many jobs in, in creating this infrastructure and, and the buildings. Thank you. Ms. Burgess. Well, I, I want to comment on something that he said. He, he says there's going to be this surgence of money that's coming. So I, I hadn't seen that in my crystal ball. So I, 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 it's hard to plan on those kind of things. And as a county supervisor, uh, I have to be responsible with uh, how I plan and, and, and know where the money's going to come from. Um, so we have been investing in jobs for a long time. BART, like I said in my last comments, comes all the way out here, and it's, going, it's supporting people going one direction. We have the infrastructure set up to bring people here. We have cities that we are all working together to create those transportation hubs, as you've talked about, and they're already in the works. We're working together to get the word out and to market ourselves. I'm looking forward to possibly in 2021 being able to get on a train in Oakley to Martinez to go to work. And that train can go all the way to Oakland in less than an hour. There's all of these different things that we're doing to, to, to create those types of transportation coming this direction as well. That's why I'm a supporting Measure J. That's why we're working on agriculture. Um, emerging technologies, industrial, and working with our entrepreneurs to create jobs here. Thank you very much. Um, I, I'd like to change uh, topics now to uh, move on. Um, the, as you know, the Delta is a precious resource. Um, one question is uh, uh, worried about the Delta tunnels, which uh, this uh, questioner thinks is, will be a, an environmental disaster and very expensive. And uh, do you support or oppose the tunnels? Uh, and what is your uh, position? Ms. Burgess. <laughs> I am against the tunnels. And I have been fighting the tunnels for a long time before I even got an elected office. And I want to remind people that Contra Costa County has been a very uh, important uh, entity that has helped prevent all these different variations, whether it was uh, the peripheral canal or, or the water fix or whatever they want to call it. And so I've been able to talk to people and, you know, basically everybody here agrees, but it's about going out and talking to people. And what they want to do is create a plumbing system. It doesn't create water. It's just a conveyance system that brings water from the very highest areas and brings it down to Southern California. And what, uh, as a part of the Delta County Coalition and the Delta Protection Commission, we have identified ways to actually create water with our money, not just a conveyance system, but actually create water. And that's water storage. When we had all of those droughts, we could have had opportunities to expand our storage. It's about water, uh, groundwater recharge. It's about uh, desalination. It's about, uh, um, uh, recycling water, and it, it creates local jobs. So it's, it, it's a win-win thing without having to destroy our precious delta, and it also protects the delta and creates water. Thank you. Ms. Mr. Seeger. Um, yeah, I too have been, um, been uh, fighting the tunnels systems um, since before I got involved in any sort of um, uh, city or uh, local other issues. Um, I've been to Sacramento and Stockton. I'm on the record um, multiple times saying and and is that we there the only way we're going to stop the tunnels is that we need to conserve and and we need to have a state that is going to mandate that the that in Southern California that before we can build these tunnels, we need people to put um, water saving measures at their, all of their water districts 
Um, the people that are using the water in central uh, California need to pay the full price of the water that's being conveyed to them. They're not paying that, it's being subsidized by the state. Um, <clears throat> so in essence, and this is the fun part, is we need to, as local area, we need to be responsible and demonstrate how to be, how to conserve and show Southern California and Central California that that you can that you can make it day to day on way less water than you're currently using. Thank you. You'd like a one minute uh, rebuttal? Yeah, I I, I want to remind people too that um, it is it is a big issue that is complicated by politics and all of those things. And it's important to be involved. I'm really proud to have been recognized by Restore the Delta and um, by Congressman Garamendi for the work that we've done to protect the Delta. I've been, uh, I was recognized as Watershed Champion of the Year for Contra Costa County, and I was recognized by the Women's um, Commission for my work with the environment, and it's all been around water. I went down to the Metropolitan Water District, and I've got to say, I, I don't want to exaggerate, but I think there's like 40 or 50 people on that commission. And I stood there by myself, and I spoke, representing all of you, that it wasn't OK, that we have a delta that is precious. It's an ecosystem. It's an economy. It's a heritage. It's a place where we recreate. It's all kinds of things to us. And I'm willing to be that lone voice if I have to be. But we have created collaboration. And we've worked with all of these counties. And we are a strong voice. And we've been successful so far. Thank you. Um, Mr. One Seeger, minute? one minute. <clears throat> um, yeah, and I, I absolutely appreciate you going down there for us and, and saying that. And I think that that's, that's a great sentiment. But what's going to what will help us to stop any further conveyance is basically science and conservation. Um, people in Southern California, they, they don't care that this is a region that we love and we care about. We need to demonstrate factually that they can, they can get by with the amount of water that they're getting through the California Canal they don't need any more. And if they do need more, they need to prove to us. They need to prove to the state, not just to us, because it is a beautiful place and we do want to preserve it, that, that they've done everything they can do to limit the water use that, they've, that they're using in their areas. Thank you very much. Um, on the, the same line as uh, water, um, climate change seems to be controversial. Um, what can you suggest to help the local environment improve? There are many issues. There's water, air, land, wildfire danger. There are many issues uh, that climate change affects. So, uh, Ms. Burgess, what, uh, what do you think um, would you suggest? I, so, just to be clear, in the conversation about climate change, we have neighbors and, and people within our community that do not acknowledge it. So we need to recognize that. But we can talk about the effects that we've mm -hmm. seen. You know, our uh, infrastructure for water, our water storage, our, our best one has gone away, and that's because of global warming. It used to be our ice pack. Up in, you know, when you see everybody doing the testing of the snowpack, that was what our, a large part of our water storage was because then it would melt slowly and go out into the delta. We're seeing rising tides, and how do we handle that? And so what we're doing is, when I was on the East Bay Regional Park District, we did work on wetlands restorations. In Oakley, we have the 1,200-acre wetland restoration, uh, the Dutch Slough Project, and that will help protect our communities. And what can we do? We've kind of talked about that already. As individuals, we need to figure out how to stay out of our cars as much as possible and how to conserve water and how to not pollute the air and how to conserve our resources. So it's about individuals. It's about 
government. It's about business. It's about sharing that value and helping people understand why it is a value that we all need to embrace. Thank you. Mr. Seeger. Um, OK, so a friend of mine uh, wrote some of this that I'm going to sort of go on. But I'm, I just need to go on the record that um, that what, one of my biggest goals is that, like I said, uh, we need to be uh, clean energy production uh, as close to carbon neutral as we can possibly be by 2030. That's my goal. That will create jobs. Um, so what we need to do is we need to transition away from fossil fuel. Um, we have uh, uh, fossil fuel, um, actually, I'm just going to continue reading. The climate crisis is an urgent threat to everything we depend on and requires a swift trans transition from fossil fuels to sustainable energy resources. Refineries and power plants in un unincorporated Contra Costa account for 94% of the region's greenhouse gas em emissions, as well as particulate matter that is harmful to public health locally. Refineries in Contra Costa continue to invest in projects to expand fossil fuel processing capacity, including increased refining of exceptionally polluting crude resources such as Canadian tar sands. We need robust, robust investment in the emerging clean energy economy that will create safe, safer, healthier, permanent union jobs for our current refinery and power plant workers. Um, so uh, I have the guts to stand up and say we need to transition our fossil fuel um, uh, uh, producers to um, we need to phase them out. They need to be phased out. OK, a follow-up question for both of you, Mr. Seeger, to begin. Um, how do you pay for uh, climate cleanup uh, ac activities? Climate cleanup. Okay, so that could be a range of issues. So um, air, water, land. Right. Well, I've, I've, so basically, the the where does the money come the, from? The Franks. Uh, well, where does it come from? Well, it doesn't come from private investment. Generally, uh, investors don't invest in in clean technologies like this. Um, it's it's basically it's going to be coming from. Um, uh, uh, grants. There's going to be, uh, as far as the Green New Deal is concerned, um, we need to very clearly um, tax the wealthy, and we need to change the way that we do business in um, the United States. And once again, we need to have our shovel-ready projects ready to go in Contra Costa, because when the money starts rolling in, <laughs> hopefully, um, that, that we're ready to go with some plans and ideas. Um, it's, it's, there, there is no free lunch, and the Green New Deal is, is basically a, um, a New Deal era type investment in, in, uh, in an entire new and more equitable economy where we're lifting up the um, the people and 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 changing who's making the decisions in Washington, whether it be you know, the, not the fossil fuel industry. Anymore. Thank you very much, Ms. Burgess. Um, I I I keep hearing you talk about the money rolling in, and I really, as a county supervisor, we cannot think in those terms. We have to think about being responsible with the money that we have. And as far as cleanup goes, I'm going to talk about brownfields because that's one of the things that I've worked on a lot with the northern waterfront and with our cities. Uh, we have this industrial area along the waterfront that you know was used for different things. And I've sat down with folks from the EPA, and there are grants and there's funding that helps provide uh, uh, studies to see what we've got. It helps with cleanup, and it even helps with some of the um, uh, economic development of these lands. And Pittsburgh's been really good at doing that. Antioch's looking at it, and Contra Costa's looking at it as well. Um, it is, we don't know what we need to clean up sometimes, and so we have to be creative. 
And so what we're doing is looking for the tools. We look to the federal and the state government for some of that. And then we look at you know creative ways to encapsulate it. I've also heard of people coming up with new technologies. And, and why not try to create some new type of economic development where we figure out how to clean up things better? That might be something that we could look into. Thank you very much. Now we're going to switch uh, gears a little bit to um, homelessness. Uh, the problem of homelessness is growing in Contra Costa. So what programs are working now, and what should we uh, do more of? So Ms. Burgess? Oh, it's me. Mm -hmm. So it is an issue that doesn't just affect uh, Contra Costa. It's a, it's a problem that affects us across the country. And it's, um, it's, it's an experience that it comes from different directions. It's a unique pathway to becoming homeless. And so how do we fight it? So if, as a board of supervisor, what can I do? We have a core team that goes out and interacts with people to make sure that we can figure out what is it that led them here and how can we get them off the street. We have tools to help people so that they don't become homeless. And on top of that, uh, we've worked with um, our cities to create, um, uh, to help get us grants. And so I, uh, we will have something like $7 million in East County. And it looks like we're going to be building a care center, hopefully within the next year. We also just got approved by the state. I think it was uh, three trailers or five trailers? Five trailers. And that'll house something between 15 and 30 people within the next two months. So we're, we're taking advantage of the opportunities that we're given, and we're looking long term to create help so that people will not become homeless and then to get people off the street. And I have more to say, but my time is up. OK, Mr. Seeger. <clears throat> Um, well, you asked what programs um, are being successful. Um, I, I know from going, walking st the streets in my neighborhoods and, uh, and in different locales that, um, that there's the, um, I don't know the name of the program, but um, they're the, basically they're, uh, social workers that are going out and making an effort to connect with people. Um, everyone is is got cards that say you know this is how you this is how you um, take care of you know dial two one one and this is how you can get a shower. This is how you can get food. This is how you can get your your uh, record expunged if if you you know if you've decided that you want to get off the streets. Um, but what it takes is it takes um, uh, skilled um, uh, people to go out into the field and to connect and to and to let homeless people know that that you care and that um, and and that that you can be that you can trust them to uh, that they're they're looking out for your best interest. Um, I think we need to do more to keep people from um, from not ending up in the streets in the first place or ending up homeless in the first place. I think this is a big enough uh, question with enough um, audience interest that we pursue this a little bit more. Uh, Mr. Seeger, can you think of um, if money appeared, if we had grant money or uh, the budget uh, afforded help, what do you think would be um, a good solution to try and get more people off the streets? Um, to get them off of the streets? Well, it's... Housed. If, okay, the people that want to be housed, um, from what I understand is, is Antioch is looking into um, uh, building some, some shelter area. Um, I've heard and read in other areas where they've created tiny house projects, but the most important thing is that when you get people into facilities where they're learning to trust again and where they're learning um, how to, uh, how to um, uh, function in society once again, 
that uh, you need to have those resources there to work with people as they're going through. What I'm concerned about right now is there um, are foreclosures going on again in East Contra Costa County and throughout the county. And, um, <clears throat> and what we need is we need our, um, our uh, a judicial system to really look into these records um, and, and, and make wise decisions that, that benefit the people and not banks. Um, okay, thank you very much. Ms. Burgess? Yeah, so the group that uh, Mr. Seeger was discussing is called the CORE Team. And these are some really great people that do great work and are um, not only committed but compassionate and uh, some of my favorite people to hang out with. But so, to, so let's go here. Uh, we need to give. We need to give it a lot of thought. And, and one of the things that I've looked at is getting our mental health commission, our drugs and other alcohol, and our homeless commission, all three of these commissions together, so that we can talk about it. Because there's there's a lot of debate on whether it's housing or whether it's services, and then we need to also talk about how to build affordable housing. I just recently spoke with the Building Industry Association, and let's have a talk about how to build affordable housing. If you haven't heard, things are getting more expensive. It's expensive, the, 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 the materials and the, um, the, the workers and all of the permitting, it's expensive. And so how do people come up with a way to make it pencil to actually build it? So I'm willing to explore that. And we're bringing in our nonprofits. We're working with our veterans and our seniors. And it's, it's, a, it's a collaboration that we are working on. Thank you very much. Um, adjacent to this topic is mental health. Uh, mental health services do need to be increased in Contra Costa. Uh, what programs do you support, Ms. Burgess? So, as I just alluded, you know, one of the biggest challenges for the mental health um, community is housing. When you have someone that is affected by severe mental illness, it is um, not like anything you've ever experienced. It's terrifying, it's heartbreaking, and it's expensive. And so we need to find ways to give them the housing. One of the things that I'm exploring is a regional level uh, investment where several counties all go in together to create a uh, facility that will give people those services. And we need to get it to them earlier than when it becomes um, a, an emergency. You know, when I was on the Oakley City Council, we saw a surge in suicides. And it wasn't because somebody said there's a surge. I noticed because I was paying attention. And I reached out to the county and I reached out to the school districts. And it's still an issue that we work on today. So it's, 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 it, there's not one answer. And nobody has figured out that special recipe to fix it. But I have immersed myself in it. And as somebody, that loves somebody that is severely affected by mental illness. It's not just a job interest of mine, it's personal. Thank you, Mr. Seeger. Um, <clears throat> once again, you asked what programs? Um, so yeah, once again, um, I definitely believe that we need to, um, to increase uh, uh, the, the public service in the area. Um, I'm not aware of programs that are helping with mental health service. I do know um, that we, we need to make sure that um, people with mental um, health issues need to have consistency in their, in their lives. And, <clears throat> and oftentimes I've heard in, in the county, and hopefully it's changing at this point right now, is that is that when they go in to see a counselor, a prescribed counselor, that they are that they have a different counselor periodically when they go back in, and it's more difficult for them to make progress because 
Um, if you know people with mental health issues that they're constantly fighting to be able to trust whoever it is that they're relying on to, to help them um, uh, wrestle with their demons. Thank you very much. Ms. Burgess, you wanted another one? Yeah, I, I wanted to add, you know, we have crisis teams that are available for adults and for youth that are available. Uh, we also have residential um, facilities th that serve our mentally ill. We also have uh, the Putnam Clubhouse that I just want to do a shout out to that, that provides a program for people to get um, uh, socialization and, and to feel uh, embraced and loved. There are a lot of programs out there, but frankly, not enough. And that's why we need to support our nonprofits, support those organizations that are doing the good work. And um, I just wanted to do a shout out because there are some really important programs out there that are serving our mental health community. Thank you very much. Um, uh, there's a question for uh, military veterans. Um, uh, can you see about helping disabled vets with uh, transportation to veteran um, uh, events? So it's military veteran support, Ms. Burgess? Yeah, there's a, so I do, I think it's quarterly, we do our commander's call and we have got this ver a very active veterans community and in my office we offer uh, veteran services. Uh, we have a therapist and then we also have someone that helps connect people to those services that they need. Um, as far as mobility goes, we've got Mobility Plus and we've been working on different ways to help people get to their doctor's appointments and the services that they need. As a member of the Tri-Delta um, Transit, we've worked on some different ways to help people get those uh, that transportation. And uh, we're also trying to make sure that we can bring those services here as much as possible. Thank you. Mr. Seeger? Um, can you restate the question? Um, uh, about military veterans, uh, can you see about helping disabled veterans with transportation to veterans' events? Um, so it's it's funding. It's a funding question for uh, to support the veterans. Certainly, is it is it different than um, helping um, just disabled people get around in Contra Costa? Period. Is that a um, special? Well, that's a, that's a good question uh, for a supervisor to uh, f come up with a creative answer to. Do you need uh, special programs for veterans? or do we need more disability programs for the general public? Um, <clears throat> yeah, and I, I mean, I definitely uh, appreciate what veterans have gone through to, um, to, to uh, support the United States in, in, their, um, in their goals. Um, I don't always agree with the goals, um, but as far as homelessness, and uh, dis disabilities and just all of these issues. Um, I think that one, we just need to get people off the street, whether they're a veteran or not a veteran. And the same thing, if, if somebody that is disabled needs to get to anywhere as a community, we need to make sure that they have the ability to to attend doctor's appointments and whatever it is that they have going on in their life. Thank you very much. Now we have a question about apprenticeship programs. Um, uh, Mr. Burgess, what do you plan, Wait. sorry, Mr. <laughs> Seeger, what do you plan to do to promote pr apprenticeship programs? Um, and I'd widen that to technical education as well. Sure. Um, I, so just to sort of piggyback on something that um, uh, Diane mentioned earlier is, is uh, technology and, and getting people to be interested in, um, in technology <clears throat> and building skill sets. Um, 
uh, I'm aware of in, in Richmond a few years ago, they actually uh, would train at-risk youth to, um, to uh, put solar um, on, on buildings and then they went around and they, they put solar on low-income housing um, <clears throat> to help people uh, f uh, f uh, facilitate their, their uh, electric bills. Um, this is just an example of of reaching out and and the, what was the exact question? What do you plan to do to promote apprenticeship programs or even trade and technical education? Um, advertise <laughs> when somebody has something that's coming up um, and to help them get their message out. And um, if I could help write grants or find money for them to be able to do so, then that seems like it would be the appropriate thing to do. Thank you. Ms. Burgess? So I want to go back to that last question about disabled veterans. If there is a veteran listening or watching down the road and you're having a problem with your transportation, you call my office and I will make sure that you are taken care of. As far as apprenticeship programs, I am the proud mom of a, a welding apprentice, and he should be finishing up his program really soon. We need to make sure, and we've just talked about the high cost of construction. We need more people from the trades, and I'm very proud to be uh, endorsed by the building trades. It is a great option for folks that are not going to go to college, but it does take expertise. It, you're using your brain, you're using your hands, and you can get a good uh, income, you can raise your family, and it's a great option for the future. I have been promoting uh, the trades to women because not enough women are going into the trades and it is a good option for women. And I've even been working with our local schools to make sure when we're having career day, that is an option that kids are getting exposed to. I recently toured the Byron um, Boys Ranch, and those kids are averaging about six months in there. And I'm thinking, why can't we be working with these kids to be preparing them to test for these wonderful programs and give them something to look forward to so that they can be someone that, that, that they can have something to look forward to and, and an income that can keep them in a place like living here in Contra Costa County. Thank you. Now we're changing uh, subject to marijuana. Um, what plans um, to uh, enhance efforts to prevent use by teenagers? Prop 64 was approved by the state um, uh, voters, and Contra Costa County, along with the cities, had to decide how they were going to incorporate that policy into their government. And the way to, to uh, be able to get the money to do prevention and to do the enforcement um, was attached to having those policies. So we have gone in kind of conservative in a lot of ways to a lot of what, what people expected. And the reason is because we want to make sure that we're bringing good actors in that are not going to um, make things less safe, that are going to contribute to our community, and are not going to uh, create more issues. And as far as uh, prevention, we have the drug prevention programs, the uh, drugs and other alcohol programs, and we will be using those funds to, to help prevent the use, and we need to go after the black market. That it, There is illegal grows in East Contra Costa, and we need to have that revenue. And I do want to remind you that there is hemp also that's going to be grown in East County. We don't have an option to be able to uh, control that, but that could cause some other issues in our community, and we need to be informed and involved and I look forward to you all giving me your feedback on how we can do that better. Thank you. Mr. Seeger. Um, education. Uh, you need to, we need to educate the community as to the, the drawbacks of, of um, early marijuana use. Um, and uh, we basically need to have a system whereby um, <clears throat> people can basically report 
um, uh, safely and anonymously if they see a resource that is uh, distributing uh, marijuana um, illegally to um, underage uh, users. Thank you. And another uh, question further on, the, on this topic. Um, uh, it says, what action would you take? But I'm assuming that this is on county property if you realize that a proposed pot farm is located less than 1,000 feet from a public ball field or a family farm that sponsors many children's events. Uh, we cre created a policy that uh, it, it has those uh, those I don't know, that it has those distances, and so that's the policies that we've come up with. We are working. Uh, some some people have different uh, opinions about those different policies, but we have. Um, when we looked at the setbacks, that's the number, the word that I was looking for. When we looked at our setbacks, we made them farther away than what we have for tobacco, even. So we've tried to do the best we can, and we. That's the policy that we're doing. We're trying to keep it from those, uh, from schools, from daycare, and that kind of thing. Mr. Seeger? Um, yeah, uh, I would suggest uh, legislation that. There is legislation. Yeah, I would, I would suggest that um, legislation is the answer. OK. Um, uh, tell us about the general plan. Um, I know it, the timing is now to start thinking about it. So, uh, how will the process be kicked off? And um, I'm going to, I know it's out of order, but I'm going to start with Ms. Burgess because uh, it, it's currently in process, I presume. So, how is the public going to be uh, kept in the loop and be able to contribute to the revision of the general plan? So, we've had public meetings and they'll be coming back around. Uh, one of the, if you look at the, the general plan from before, it, there was a whole lot of information about earthquakes because it happened right after an earthquake. Um, there's nothing in there about cell phone towers or, um, you know, the new, oh, huh? Wildfires? Wildfires. I mean, there's, the, so this general plan is being modified so that it actually is current and relevant, and it takes out the things that don't need to be in there. And we've made it a priority that each community is engaged in that. Um, it's also important, in my opinion, that we also put a little bit more um, understanding of each of the unincorporated areas, because they're each unique, and they each have different um, priorities and, and concerns. And so we've been really making sure that we are engaging people and that we've been uh, advertising it. And we've had good turnout here in East County. Thank you. Mr. Seeger, I know you're not involved in it, but uh, do you have uh, thoughts about what should be included and how to get people involved? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've, I've attended several meetings um, in Oakley uh, for their general plan update. Which is which is a ridiculous general plan update, um, and then the county, which feels like they're going out and they're making an effort to um, to communicate with the public. Um, there's generally a 15 minute presentation and then some time for people to go around and um, write down what it is that they think or want on a poster. Um, <clears throat> It's, it's an interesting process because um, it doesn't feel like there's a scope, a scoping of the general plan that can dial it in. So um, I actually, uh, I suggested to a friend of mine from the Greenbelt Alliance that we get a group of, of um, environmental groups involved. And I didn't have time to actually, or the resources to put this together. But um, she created a group that put together some very dynamic <clears throat> uh, environmental requirements that they'd like to see put into this general plan for Contra Costa in order to create a more sustainable developing uh, general plan. And like I said earlier, is we'd really like to see a climate action plan with teeth put in it so that we can make the unincorporated areas of Contra Costa um, uh, uh, um, partners 
in, in uh, greenhouse gas uh, reduction. Thank you. Now this is our final question uh, concerning the census. Uh, <laughs> what can you uh, suggest to get a higher percentage of non-English speaking population to complete the census information? Um, well, I believe the, that, that, well, we need to um, advertise um, liberally. Um, we need to get people into the communities, which is obviously what's happening. And, <clears throat> and, uh, and it's difficult. It's, it's, it's much like um, trying to convince um, the, the, the homeless that you mean well, that you have the best intention when you're reaching out to the community and you're trying to say, listen, we want to collect information on you um, and you just need to trust that we're not going to turn this over to anyone, and it's difficult, and uh, it's just a matter of of uh, of going back time and again, and you know, it's hard because you know who we really don't know what they're going to do at the federal level, and it's sad. Uh, we need to communicate with with people in the schools and and let the kids know that that you know we're concerned, and this in our area could help you in our community, could help, you know, with programs for our community. Thank you. Ms. Burgess. So for the first time in history, the, the census has become a political issue, and it's attached to, for a lot of people, it's a, there's a fear attached to it. So California um, put money towards helping with outreach, and the county received a little over 300,000. And I was approached by a lot of our community organizations and even some of the county staff and asked me to head up the um, census steering committee, and my colleagues appointed me. So we started off, and we g created a committee that reaches every region of Contra Costa County. Because if we have a 5% under count that's somewhere between 500 and a billion dollars in loss of revenue. It also affects how much um, representation we have. And for a lot of the cities that are going to districting, it's gonna impact those cities so that they can do their districting. What we've done is we've brought together nonprofits, which is also a way of helping them create capacity building, so they're learning how to do good work. But we've reached out to communities related to the immigrant community, English second language, children under five, people that are homeless, and we're, t we're reaching out to ethnic media, we're reaching out to all the churches, we're working with the faith communities, and we are trying to create trusted messengers that will want everybody to be counted once and in the right place. Thank you very much. And thank you, audience. Um, I apologize if I didn't ask, ask your question because I was asking someone else's. There were too many questions for the time that we had this evening. Possibly you could stay a few minutes after the program and ask the candidates uh, uh, your question individually if they can stay a little while. Now, each candidate will have uh, a minute and a half for a closing statement, and we will begin with Mr. Seeger. Okay, thank you once again for having us. Um, so this is where, once again, if, if you're uh, the incumbent, um, I remember when uh, uh, Ms. Burgess was running for um, the uh, supervisor four years ago, that it was not nearly as neat and complete, the answers that were given. Um, this is all stuff that can be learned if you pay attention to what I've done at the Water District, um, the successes that I've had in Oakley in order to help people get their houses rezoned back to their, their when they, they had their properties zoned out of ag and they weren't told. Um, I, I um, fought a power plant in the city of Oakley, a fossil fuel power plant. My, um, my opponent, she was for the power plant, and the power plant has not been built, and it's not going to be built. So there's some successes that you can have just doing your homework and working hard and having friends within the environmental community. I have no doubt that I could actually, that I would absolutely master 
all of the different topics that were that were spoken of tonight, this felt like a very leveraged audience. And so the questions that came, um, some of them just they they felt like there's a lot of answers that you just don't get unless you're actually talking to the county administrator and working on these things on a regular basis. Thank you, Ms. Burgess. So first of all, I'd like to thank all of the organizers and sponsors of tonight's event, and I want to thank the folks that are watching and the people that attended and the people that provided the questions tonight. You know, time is the one thing that we can't take back. And so for you to take your time to be curious and, and willing to listen and, and think about this, I really take it, uh, I, I, I'm really uh, grateful. Uh, I love this job. I am committed to this job. And I, I appreciate the, um, the compliment. You know, I'm curious and I care and I work with people and I have a record of being able to accomplish things and bring people together. And I think that that's what you want in a leader. It's great to have ideals, but it's really important to have someone that's a doer. And they say some people run to be somebody for elected office, and some people run to do something. And that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to do things and make my community better for us for our children, for our grandchildren, and for who's coming forward. If you want more information for me, from me, I, I, I encourage you to look at my website. As your county supervisor, reach out to my, my staff and reach out to me because I have great people, smart people that work with me, that care about our community, and I appreciate your consideration, and have a good evening. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank the Contra Costa County Libraries, the Elections Department, and CCTV for co-sponsoring tonight's forum, and to thank all of you in the audience for your respectful attention and on the internet as well. Be sure to vote on March 3 or by mail earlier. And these are our two candidates for Contra Costa County Board of Supervisors, District 3. Let's give them a hand. Thank you all. Super generic, absolutely. But it, it also at the same time felt like I'm, 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 not I'm not used to being this tall. A lot of the questions were like, what group, this organization? I don't know. 